Hi everyone, this lesson is on lingua plicata, which is a condition where your tongue looks like this. This condition has many different names. Some of them include fissured tongue, furrowed tongue, grooved tongue, scrotal tongue, cerebriform tongue, or plicated tongue. Many different names for the same condition where your tongue looks like this. We're going to talk about some potential causes for this condition. We'll also talk about some of the potential complications of having this particular issue. And we'll also talk about certain things we can do to potentially help resolve or treat this condition. So lingua plicata, again, condition involving the tongue. It's a benign condition that involves deep fissuring of the tongue. So again, tongue looks like this, but it's essentially these big deep ridges or fissures in the tongue. This can occur in healthy individuals. In fact, it can be very prevalent it may affect up to 20% of the general population. Now, there are particular factors that seem to increase the likelihood of having this condition. Some of these include being of the male biological sex, so males are more likely to be affected than females. It's also more common in older age patients, particularly over the age of 50. So there's an increasing prevalence with increasing age. But having said all that, there are particular or potential causes for having lingua plicata. And there are other medical conditions where patients that have those conditions are more likely to have lingua plicata as well. So some of the potential causes that may lead to a person having this condition include possible genetic contributions. So it does appear that there's a polygenic or autosomal dominant effect with regards to this condition, although with incomplete dominance. So all of this means that polygenic means perhaps there's multiple genes that are responsible for increasing the risk of having this. And autosomal dominant means that you only need one copy of an affected allele to potentially present with this type of tongue or be more likely to have lingua plicata, but it has incomplete dominance, meaning that not everybody that has that one copy of the allele will show or will have this type of condition. It's also more common in certain conditions, as I mentioned before. These include Down syndrome, Melkerson, Rosenthal syndrome, having psoriasis, Sjogren syndrome, so having dry eyes, dry mouth. The dry mouth may lead to cracking or deeper fissures in the tongue, and chronic granulomatous disease. And there is a potential cause regarding vitamin deficiencies. So deficiencies of particular B vitamins may increase the risk of lingua plicata. So in fact, deficiencies in many different B vitamins can increase the risk of having issues with the mouth. So issues with the lips and the tongue, this may increase the risk of having lingua plicata. So deficiencies in vitamin B2, vitamin B5, B6, B9. So there isn't much evidence with regards to which B vitamin deficiency might cause this condition, but it is potential that one of those deficiencies or multiple deficiencies may increase the risk of this condition. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of this condition. So most of the time, if we were to look at the tongue, look at the dorsal tongue and the lateral tongue, we can see furrowing or fissures in the tongue. So these big ridges or fissures in the tongue, and most of the time that's going to be the only clinical features. There's not going to be pain. There won't be anything else except it being visibly deep fissured. So again, most of the time asymptomatic except for the deep fissures on the tongue. However, in some cases, patients can have halitosis. Halitosis is a bad stinky breath. The reason that this can occur is because if we have these big deep fissures in the tongue, bacteria can enter in to those deep fissures and food particles, if you've eaten, food particles can get trapped within those fissures and that can lead to a smell. So patients with this condition can start to have bad breath or halitosis. And then because of that buildup of food particles, bacteria, there can be some local inflammation of the tongue or focal glossitis. So there can be some red spots on the tongue. These are going to be, for the most part, the only signs and symptoms of this condition. So with regards to the focal glossitis, we may get a bit of pain or a little bit of soreness or a bit of burning sensation wherever that focal glossitis may occur. But other than that, we may only have bad breath or we may only see big deep fissures on the tongue and that might be the only finding. However, there are potential complications or consequences of having this condition if it's not well dealt with. 
let's say. So again, we talked about focal glossitis, so we can get this reddened appearance. So there can be inflammation of the tongue in certain spots, again, due to buildup of food particles or bacteria causing inflammation. And we can also have an increased risk of oral candidiasis. So tongue can look like this. So this is a fungal infection of the tongue. Candida albicans yeast can enter into those fissures. They can multiply and then can lead to something like this. This can occur as well. These are potential complications. So let's talk about how this condition is diagnosed and treated. So the diagnosis is simply going to be a clinical diagnosis. We're going to look at the tongue and make the diagnosis just by visual inspection. And then treatment oftentimes may not be ne necessary in certain cases. Sometimes patients can have a spontaneous resolution. So in some cases it may be short lasting. Patients can have a spontaneous resolution without doing anything or without realizing that they've changed anything. But in other cases, patients may have a longer lasting condition. And in these particular cases, we're going to want to do certain things to help improve the likelihood of having a resolution. Some of these include avoiding tobacco. Tobacco can irritate the tongue, can irritate those fissures or make it less likely that the fissures can close and heal. Avoiding alcohol, again, this is for the same reason, and also avoiding spicy and acidic foods, all for the same reason. These can irritate the tongue, and they may decrease the likelihood of having a healing or a resolution of this condition. Now, some other important things we want to think about here is that while we have this condition, because of those deep fissures in the tongue, you want to have very good dental hygiene. And the reason is because of the fact that we mentioned before, food particles can get trapped in those fissures. Bacteria can then multiply within those fissures in the tongue, and that can cause either halitosis, bad breath, or inflammation of the tongue. So when eating, especially right after eating, you want to gently brush the tongue, and that's important, gentle brushing, especially if you can get a toothbrush with soft bristles. You want to gently brush the tongue. You don't want to irritate the tongue any more than it has to be. So you want to gently brush it, make sure that there's no food particles trapped. Make sure that you clear out any debris that's in the fissures. So that's going to be very important. And again, try to do this regularly anytime you have anything to eat. A tongue scraper can work. Again, you want to be gentle with this because you don't want to irritate the tongue any more than you have to. And as mentioned before, there is a potential role for vitamin deficiencies in causing this condition. So taking B-complex vitamins may be important. Even taking multivitamins, there may be other deficiencies not related to vitamin B deficiencies that may increase the risk of having this and making sure that you're not deficient in iron. Iron deficiencies may also irritate the mouth and tongue as well. So that's going to be important, and also vitamin B12 is something else to think about as well. Please check out my other dermatology lessons if you want more information on other dermatological conditions. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.